Can Melodyne fix an out-of-tune acoustic guitar? Let's find out. So I've got an acoustic guitar with some intonation issues, so even though it's technically in tune, when you start fretting chords, that doesn't always hold up. So let's hear this chord right off the mic before we try to tune it. Let's load up Melodyne and transfer this in. Let's switch the algorithm to polyphonic sustain because it's a held out chord made up of multiple notes. And in the note assignment mode, let's drag the potential note slider all the way to the right so we get all of the notes and all of the harmonics. I'll click Command A to select all of the notes and then I'll double click with the pitch tool to snap it in tune. All right, let's hear what we've got. I'll play you before and after a couple times. So it's definitely more in tune, but the top end is kind of mush now. And you can hear there's much less detail in the strum. Here, let me play it again and listen to the top end. You almost can't hear the pick against the strings anymore. Yeah, that's not great. So to me, it just comes down to which version bothers you less. And I think that'll depend on the genre. If you're recording a singer-songwriter where maybe the acoustic guitar is the focus of the song, you might not want the digital artifacts and instead leave the guitar a little out of tune. But if you're working on something like house music where the guitar is surrounded by a bunch of other instruments, you might not notice the lack of detail or the digital artifacts and prefer to lock it in tune. You could even change the notes of the chord to create some movement and fit your track. Here, let me show you what I mean. I have a session here where I flew in that same guitar and I took two different strums for the left and the right and I made it into a stereo track. And then I just chopped it into this groove and put a trance gate on it to create some movement. And with the drums, that sounds like this. So it's pretty cool on its own, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's just that same chord over and over, which maybe that's cool for an intro or like the ride out of a track. But when I throw in the bass, which has some changes in the second half, the guitar technically won't fit. So let me show you what that sounds like. Okay, I actually kind of love that, and it could be really cool to use during a break or a bridge to create some tension. But for the sake of this demo, let's sync up the chords of the guitar with the changes of the bass. I'll consolidate this loop, and then just like we did earlier, let's load it up into Melodyne, set it to polyphonic sustain, and in the note assignments mode, I'm gonna move this slider again all the way to the right so that it gets all of the notes and all of the harmonics. Just like we did earlier, I'll click Command A to select all, and I'll double click to lock the tuning in place across the board. So I'm gonna take this whole second half and move it up to a D flat. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Not great. And it's because the D flat is supposed to be a major chord and without polyphonic note access, we'd be stuck. But if I click this E and slide it up by a half step, that should sound much better. Let's check it out. Let's do the same approach for the last chord change. I've just got some notes joined together here, so I'll zoom in and split them before we drag them down so that it doesn't undo the work we just did on that third chord. And we'll move this chord to a B flat, which in this key is minor like our original chord, so it should sound okay without having to tweak the individual notes. Let's see. There's a little bit of weirdness happening at the very end, and I think it's just some harmonics that Melodyne interpreted as a note from the really quick stutter effect that I put in the last beat. And that's coming up right here. I'm just playing a B over a B flat, which is gonna rub a little bit. They're only a half step away, so they're gonna sound a little weird together. So I'm just gonna take this B, which is not in the key, and cut that out. That's cool, it almost makes it sound like an accordion, which may or may not be what you're going for. So I just committed up to the Melodyne insert, and so now I'm gonna take this version, which is our tuned version, and I'll make a new playlist on our original track and fly this up. And we wanna redo the chop at the end that was getting a little bit weird in the Melodyne algorithm. So I'll set the grid to 16th notes, and I'll just grab a sample from the beginning, copy that, paste it here, and duplicate that out.
Yeah, that sounds really cool. And the reason it's not just a steady chop of the same four notes in a row, even though that's what it looks like, is because of this Trance Gate plugin, which is one of my favorite plugins. And you can use it to create movement in things that are otherwise kind of boring. Even if all you wanted to do is set this to pump on the eighth note so that your bass moves opposite your kick drum, that'd be a really easy way to do that. But I have this pattern set here that's just creating some extra movement to this loop, which we've already chopped up. So let's play this last measure with this plugin bypassed. Pretty cool, but it's simple and repetitive, and you can really hear that everything is just chopped and spliced. But when I put this gate plugin back on, which is moving to this pattern that we set, it's gonna add movement and some complexity and just make it more interesting. Love that. So let's hear this last loop all the way through one more time. I think it sounds really cool. So of course, try to get it right at the source while you're recording. But if that's not an option, maybe you're the mixing engineer and the band can't go back into the studio to re-record. Or maybe it's a sample you're trying to make work in your track. Well, this is a great way to fix it. So I hope this sparked some creativity. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.